friends, welcome back to the channel. If you're new, hey, what's up? I'm Savannah. On the channel, I talk about the fun side of minimalism. That's what I say, really, I just mean trying to own less, <laughs> trying to shop less, be more intentional with my life. I just moved into a new house. We moved from California to Montana, so big change for us. Currently, I am unpacking. It's gonna be unpacking, organizing, and a lot of decorating. So I've been doing a ton of thrifting and like vintage shopping and collecting things, and now I'm really starting to like piece things together. So in today's vlog, we're gonna do a bit of styling. We're gonna do a mini bathroom makeover for my guest bathroom. It's gonna be a wild, wild west theme. And then throughout the rest of my house, it's kind of just like a modern cozy cabin sort of feel. Warm, lived in, kind of like kinfolk magazine adjacent. That's sort of the vibe. Okay, we are in the living room, kitchen, dining room. I guess it's all <laughs> one room, really. We're gonna do something super quick and simple because I just got my pillowcases in the mail. These are for my throw pillows for the sofa. I used to have like three per side. Now I've just boiled it down to just having one fat pillow. Let's, uh, let's stuff these with pillows and see how they look. And yes, I bought weird blue ones because they were significantly cheaper than the white ones. And I figured they're going in a dark pillowcase. <laughs> I feel like you really have to fluff them because all the pillows, pillows, feathers are clumped together. And I did buy my pillows in one size up from the pillowcase. I don't know if you've ever heard that like interior design secret, but I've been doing it for the past few years and it really like makes a big difference to make your pillows like super fluffy and full. Okay, it's not even that stuffed. <laughs> Okay, they look infinitely better than I expected and I kind of had high expectations. Let me show ya. Okay, do these not look crazy good? I know it's very like lodge vibes, Christmas vibes, but you guys, we're living in the mountains and by the snow and it looks really cool with my extra little throw blankets. They look like pillows you'd see like wrapped in twine at this little bohemian store that are like 90 bucks each, but they weren't. They were really, really inexpensive. I also quickly wanted to show you guys this really pretty landscape picture that I got. It's really wide, like I wanna say like two and a half feet. It's an actual oil painting, it has texture and I feel like it's really kind of for a landscape optimistic without being like too corny. Maybe a little corny, maybe a little sound of music. And while we're in here, I wanted to show you guys my new dining chairs. We got the steal of the freaking century. Let me grab one. So here are our new dining chairs. They're kind of like this beautiful neutral acorn color with these cool spindles in the back here. We found them at this consignment, basically furniture shop here in Whitefish. And all the chairs together were listed for $250 all five. It's like, wait, what? I thought it was per chair because they just look so cool. And then we found the nightstands and they were listed for, I think, $250 for the two. <laughs> and Dustin is just so good at negotiating. And we got them all in the car. He's like, yeah, I got them all for $375. I was like, what? All of our dining chairs and our nightstands, all solid wood for $375. I mean, come on. Wayfair can't even with that. So let's do the bathroom makeover. It's a mini makeover, it's nothing crazy. I'm not like painting or anything. I'm just hanging up some artwork, doing some styling, adding some accessories to the countertop and then doing some DIY curtains. Let me show you the bathroom as it is. Here's the bathroom, pretty classic. There's the mirror, what's up? Really cute lights, like if you look closely at this kind of like paper, it's kind of like a dog rawhide bone or like a tissue paper collage. But I feel like that's a little bit Western. There's a window right here, which is very sweet. There are neighbors over there, but this is so high, like your, your body that would be exposed is underneath it. So technically it doesn't need a curtain there, but it's so like plain in here that I feel like it's one of the only ways to like add a splash of color. And then I'm gonna hang some art here as well as some art over there. So let me show you what I have collected. So for bathroom artwork, I have this first picture. I thrifted this at a vintage fair like a year or so ago. And then the second piece I have, I just printed it today. So I got this vintage ivory soap advertisement, a bit of a cute camping scenario in the back. And I actually got this on Etsy. If you guys have never done digital downloads, like a lot of them are less than $10, and then you just print it yourself. So I got this print, I wanna say for $4.99, and then I went to UPS and I printed did it for one dollar literally one dollar and then the frame i'm putting it in i thrifted this week this beautiful solid wood frame with this really pretty kind of like tan greenish mat and it was half off homeware it was six dollars but i got it for three dollars so let's put this in the frame and then hang up our two pictures while i'm opening up this old frame i wanted to mention a few other really good resources i found for free prints i really didn't want to spend any money but i was looking for something kind of niche but i will say unsplash.com if you've never used it it's like stock images but people 
people like put up their photography for free use and like super high res you can find such amazing images and you just download it and print it yourself i found for like photo photo prints costco was like the cheapest and best quality but for me i don't know i really like the vintage look so a lot of times that i'm finding like an art print i just go to like ups or wherever and print it on like a matte paper but when i was on unsplash i discovered like a little pocket within where a lot of public library systems and like museums put up quite a big gallery of famous like artwork just a, a really good resource i wanted to share because i found really cool stuff so cute and to hang this i'm just using a tiny nail and a hammer i used to like use a lot of those command strips thinking that as a renter they were going to damage the walls less but i actually found that through trial and error that they damage the walls way more like sometimes you pull them off and like a chunk of the wall comes out I like this angle on camera looks anticlimactic, but it looks really nice. It looks fancy. Like it looks, I don't know, expensive is a silly word, but it looks substantial. I'm trying to figure out exactly where to hang this. I was just watching Exa McKenna's channel and she was talking about hanging paintings slightly off center and kind of like in unexpected places as more of like a cozy homey cottage, like French sort of feel. So I think I'm just gonna eye it. Okay, next up is curtains. I thrifted two. Well, one is technically a balance, the thing that swirls across the top of a curtain. The original color I was looking for online was kind of like a camel or a nude with really thin plaid lines, but <laughs> I couldn't find anything really that good online and I just didn't want to spend a ton on this. So when I found this at the thrift store, it's a little more Thanksgiving y, but it definitely is still giving the cabin feel. I don't know, I'm into it. I want to bring down the curtain rod because really this bathroom is not that bright, it doesn't get that much light. So I'm thinking about just doing a little halfer right here and then my other curtain is more farmhouse is just this traditional buffalo plaid green and white check like i actually do secretly love it and i do love these little strap hangers i kind of love both i'm gonna i'm gonna have dustin weigh in so option one do you think it's too farmhouse or do you see the cabin in it i see the cabin in it i like these straps too and it's more sheer so it lets in more light or this one which i feel like is more like rich and rustic i don't know if it's too like old country buffet there's some truth to that but like now that you say that you're right there's like a it doesn't let any light in i mean you can always just like scoot it you know what i mean like it's on a curtain rod you can just go yeah. scoot so now we looked at both the curtains up and we both like them both equally which is <laughs> i guess it's a good problem to have two good options uh okay so this one definitely ties in the colors a lot better with this picture and that picture like they're all exactly the same two matchy matchy question mark the green buffalo it definitely doesn't match the colors quite as well but i feel like it brings in a little bit of funky freshness and ties in some of the other colors in the house like this seems like the safe choice right like this is what like a mom with really good interior design like an older mom i'm thinking a mom in like the 90s or the 2000s this is like what she would choose and you'd walk into her bathroom and you'd be like solid beautiful love it and this one's a little bit more i guess like unexpected not that it's that crazy it's literally just a curtain but i think I think I want to go for the unexpected one and then if I feel like I kind of hate it for some reason down the road I can just swap it over so let's sew this curtain luckily this one needs hardly any work okay I've trimmed the curtain and now I'm gonna use this like heat bond hem adhesive I haven't used this since I don't know if I've ever used one of these. My mom would always make new curtains around our house growing up and would use this. It's just like a fast kind of nose sew thing for quick projects. And it's funny, I've had this iron since college. It has my initials and Sharpies. I got it, I guess my freshman year, which is like 2009. I had it in my sorority house. I just like, I don't know. It was one of the first things I owned as an adult that made me feel like an adult, I guess. Oh my goodness, look at the curtains. Are you kidding me? They look so much better hemmed, just floating there. All right, we've got our paintings hung, we've got our curtains, time to style the countertop. So the first countertop styling item I got is an Amazon find. It's just one of those things I saw, I was like, that's a great price. It looks really, really cool. The reviews are great, but I'm just skeptical of Amazon reviews. I feel like a lot of them are fake. Anyway, I ordered it and it's the coolest thing ever. So it's this tissue box cover it's faux leather and it has this little strap does this not look so cool and chic 
This is kind of what inspired the whole bathroom because this feels very Western to me. And then the last two items I have for the bathroom is just a candle and soap. So I got this candle. I usually don't splurge on candles, but when it feels right, I will. It's made by a local person here in Montana. And then I got this soap today. I just grabbed it at TJ Maxx. I feel like it's really, really hard with hand soaps <laughs> from places like that. A lot of times you use them, they're just like creepy gelatin that smells like nothing. But I really like took the time to smell a bunch and like see the consistency. Wild honey. I just thought the label looked a little but it's English, but a little bit like wild Western at the same time. And for a glamorous final touch, we have a toilet brush. I was looking at toilet brushes, toilet trash cans at like Target and Home Goods. Oh my gosh, why are they so expensive now? Everything was like $20, $30. It's craziness. But Ikea, man, I looked at the dollar store too. The dollar store ones were just like too crappy. Like they were like not quite worth a dollar. Anyway, I like Ikea. Ikea is a really good price. So I ordered the same exact really plain white toilet scrubber for all of our bathrooms. It has a black brush, black bristles, it works well. And then I also got just this plain white little tiered trash can. I tried a few different trash cans in the past. Cuter ones, they're kind of hard to clean. Also, I've done like the bag in the trash can, but I feel like that's a lot of work also. So what I've got to at this point in my life is just getting a plain plastic trash can, no bag, and then I'll just like rinse it out every couple of months when it gets kind of nasty trash can. Okay, here I am in the only seat in the bathroom. I think the mini makeover for the bathroom is complete as I'm looking around, but it's like pitch black out. Yeah, it's nighttime. And so I'm going to pick up with you guys in the morning and do the reveal then. <laughs> the crazy big reveal. See you in the morning. Good morning, you guys. Welcome back to the bathroom. It's still a little bit overcast outside, so the lighting is not superb, but there's enough light in here to show you the gist of it. And after I'm done showing you the bathroom reveal, we're gonna go out and go shopping. We're looking for a dining table today. I really wanna have one before Thanksgiving. My OOTD, this is my favorite new shirt. I thrifted it a couple weeks ago from this amazing shop in Columbia Falls called Coyote. The shop owner, Cody, he actually cropped this and sewed it and added this cute little patch. And I'm just wearing like my blue silk maxi dress and white sneakers. That is my OOTD. All right, let's show you the bathroom and then let's go shopping. I was getting a really good shot and it's just me standing on a toilet. <laughs> Gosh darn it, I finally found a really cool red tree skirt for $2.99, but I already bought one <laughs> new for 30 bucks. This is where we go in the furniture store, <laughs> the value center. Hello you guys, we are finally back from shopping. It turned into an all day affair. I think we went to three furniture stores, three thrift stores, and three antique shops. And honestly didn't find that much, which I feel like is anticlimactic for like a vlog on the internet, but that is like the real, real reality of shopping, secondhand shopping. But I did wanna show you guys two really cute things I found. The first off <laughs> is this blanket holder. It's technically for quilts, I believe, like a quilt display. It's definitely very grandma. I'm gonna hang up my two wool blankets on here, the ones I thrifted. And then this little guy, <laughs> this is just a fruit bowl. I got this at the Goodwill. Oh yeah, this was five bucks and this fruit bowl was two. I really wanted to get like a really long big wooden dough bowl. I'll insert a picture of one. You probably see them. I feel like they're kind of popular. But after putting my fruit in this, I gave it a little sample sample. It actually fit in perfectly and looked really, really chic with everything else in the kitchen. I'm just mentioning that because I feel like sometimes you can get pigeonholed with your own ideas or thinking there's one solution or a perfect item that's going to complete your area. And as you like buy things or adjust or try things, your plans can really, really change. finally 
ready to tackle this closet. And actually my toddler is here, he's present, but my husband's at the grocery store shopping for Thanksgiving and I would way rather be organizing a closet with a toddler. Even though that's kind of my own personal hell, it's even more hellish to be at the grocery store right now. So I'm thankful Dustin's checking that off the list for us. So let's tackle this closet. I'm gonna first remove everything out. Typically I just put it on the floor, but I'm gonna put it all in my kitchen island so my little one can't get into it. I like to think about how often I use something in relation to its placement in the closet. So I made a little list on a pad of paper about what I use daily, weekly, and monthly because I feel like if you don't think about it and premeditate on where things should go, things that you use monthly are like on the most prominent shelves and the things you use daily are in an awkward place that's hard to get in and out. So that's gonna be kind of my focus of where things are prioritized and then doing just General themes like over on this side there is a space where I can fit my vacuum and our mop so it's gonna be kind of more clean focused over here and then over on this side it's gonna be a bit of miscellaneous household items one's gonna be my YouTube shelf aka like my laptop charger tripod etc because I don't have a place for that right now and it's always floating and I'm just afraid someone's gonna spill their coffee on it including me and then also like office supplies craft supplies like light entertaining stuff that I would use monthly like a candle box so let's get after it I'm gonna pull everything out So here's all the stuff on my countertop and then <laughs> back here on these counters as well. And then I also have some sheets over here. I think I'm gonna put the sheets down stairs. I'm gonna start with this big area down in this closet. I'm planning to do kind of a snowball effect. Start with some big things, knock them out, feel good, get some momentum, and then just like keep it grooving. What I wanna do is put a little wall hanger up on the wall for my vacuum. It came with one, I just never installed it. And I also have some little command hooks. I'm gonna hang up these two little kid <laughs> mops and brooms. I also have a few scraggler like vacuum accessories, like an extra filter, so cedar mop heads. I'm gonna put these all in this little plastic box. I ordered some of these from Ikea. I like that it's small because things don't get lost. And I'm also gonna try to fit my handheld vacuum and charger in here as well. We'll, we'll see if it fits. My vacuum accessories, mop accessories right there. The next little thing I see on my counter that feels like in the same space, I guess a little appliances, is gonna be our steamer and our iron. I feel like I use these a little bit less often than the handheld vacuum, and this is taller, so I'm gonna stow them up in the back corner. All right, next for the cleaning supply closet, and I'm not keeping any chemicals in there. Those are all locked under my sink, but I wanna put kind of like household fix-it items, like magic erasers, a hammer, nails. So I'm gonna take some time to sort through all the goods in this pile and separate them into these plastic bins so I can put them away. So side number one is done. I've got the little brooms, the vacuum, and then I have my, I guess, cleaning appliances, my vacuum and then iron and steamer up there. And then I have kind of like my hardware stuff. I put batteries in this little bin. I don't love double stacking, but I think that that's not too, too much of a hassle. And then extra baby proofing stuff. That's the dealio with that side. Let's get grooving on this side. The closet is finished. Over here we have candles, office supplies, my YouTube shelf. I've got our printer, some coloring books for my son we use daily, diapers, wipes, and then reusable bags. And Dustin just got home from Walmart. Have you guys ever seen these mini candle lighting lighters? I need them because I almost burn myself every time I'm trying to light a candle that's really low. Okay. I'm gonna put away a few other things that didn't quite fit into the closet for me, which are my sheets and some of my old sentimental items. 
So I'm definitely feeling some momentum from doing the hall closet. So now I'm gonna jump over to the pantry using the same methodology that I used in the hall closet. As far as the items, I reach for the most, put them in the most prevalent spaces, easy to grab spaces. I'm a firm believer that things need to be just as easy to put away as they are to take out. Otherwise you just won't put them away properly and your spaces will get messy really, really fast. Let's go pop in the pantry. And then after I organize the pantry, I'm gonna do some super, super light holiday decorating, probably just a few strings of lights and just things that give the house a bit more of a warm, friendly glow, just to get the house a little bit more lively for Thanksgiving. So here is the pantry. I've got my canned goods, pasta, rice, and I hid the snacks over here, like salty snacks, sweet treats, mostly for my son. <laughs> then I've got some like baking goods, peanut butter oatmeal stuff, and then some baking stuff. A lot of this is for Thanksgiving. Ooh, ooh. And then really, I have just left these middle shelves empty because my son gets in here so much. And then back in this corner, I just have some like back stock supply. And now we're actually gonna do a little ice skating. So see you at the rink. Cinnamon's just getting like in my mouth. It's like the cinnamon challenge. <laughs> so here are all of my holiday decorations. I did a lot of decluttering last year. I got everything down just to fit in this one box. The box is the boundary. So if things don't fit in here at the end of this Christmas, then I need to declutter some. I would say like 50% of this box is Christmas ornaments. We collect quite a few. And there's some Christmas lights in here. And that's what I'm gonna pull out right now are just all of our holiday lights. Ooh, I forgot about these. This is a really fun DIY, just slicing oranges and baking them in the oven and drying them out and making a garland. Then I have this brass reindeer. This was my grandma's and it was handed down to me. And I feel like it fits the mountain vibe, so I'm gonna put this out too. I'd already thrown up these fairy lights. These ones are from Ikea. I like them more than like the typical strands that you buy because it's more substantial. It's on this copper wire and like more clusters. So if you have an Ikea near you, they have really, really good little Christmas lights. We've decided that the multicolor lights are just a little too Christmassy for it not being Thanksgiving yet. Thanksgiving's in a few days. That's when I'll break out the rest of the Christmas box on like Saturday or Sunday of Thanksgiving weekend. We're also gonna go cut down our Christmas tree out of the forest. We're so, so hyped for Christmas because we're finally in our new house. So life is good. So I'm gonna put away all these colored lights, bring that box of Christmas stuff back down to the basement and close it out. I hope you guys enjoyed the little mini bathroom makeover, the organizing, and then just some very light holiday decorating. Thanks for watching. I love you so much. I'll catch you in my next one. Bye.